This rugged and harsh terrain was perfect to test the capabilities of the Unimog. The stunning landscape is a photographer and geologist's dream. It offered us some unique photo opportunities. Join us as we drive through the Flinders and Gammon Ranges to the Akarula Wildlife Sanctuary. The Flinders Ranges are located around 450 kilometres north of Adelaide in South Australia. We left the Eyre Peninsula in South Australia and headed north. On our first night, we camped on a dry riverbed. The next morning while I had a shower, Ian sent up the drone. It was February and the end of a hot, dry summer. The temperatures were always in the high 30s. We found a nice flat section of road. It was time to get out the drone so I could practice flying while we were driving. It almost ended in disaster, but I managed to recover and then I got the hang of it. We saw this old landslide and decided to stop in the pull-off area close by for some lunch and to fly the drone. We were amazed by the size of the trees in such a dry, arid area. Did I mention it was hot? Our next stop was Razorback Lookout, an impressive view of an iconic Australian landscape. A visit to Sacred Canyon had been recommended to us by the ranger at Wilpina Pound Information Centre. Now it can only be accessed with a guide. As you walk through the gorge, you can see ancient etchings and paintings on the rocks. The gum trees are magnificent and you have to wonder how long they've been here. That night we stayed at the Ackerman campground. It's a small campground with plenty of shade. Because of the time of the year, there was only one other camper there. Burkina East Campground was our next stop. We were able to access the campsites much further down the road. We drove as far as we could to the last of the campsites, a beautiful spot on the banks of the river, surrounded by tall gum trees. Late in the afternoon, we sent up the drone and were surprised to see some water further upstream. The gum trees line the banks. They are specially adapted to this type of climate and only need the occasional flood to prosper. Far from light pollution, 
The night skies are breathtaking. While we were making breakfast the next morning, we had a visitor, an enormous kangaroo. After breakfast, we headed out towards Aruna Hut. On the way, we saw the sign for fossil worm burrows. We had no idea what we were looking for. It turns out they were very small. We got to the hut around mid-morning. It was already very hot. Built in the 1920s, it was used by the famous Australian artist Hans Hasen when he visited the area. There were so many flies, but it was the perfect spot for photos. We decided to do the circuit walk from the hut back to the Aruna station ruins. We did some photos in the gorge, then headed up the ridge. We each had two litres of water with us, but the heat was intense. About six kilometres into the eight kilometre walk, we had run out. We retreated to the truck as soon as we got back. Having the air con while driving was great. We headed straight to our next campsite, We Tutla. It is about five kilometres off the main road. The road is a bit rougher. You need to watch out for the wildlife resting under the trees. The main campground is a flat open space. But if you are self-contained, you can go a little bit further down. a great spot on the banks of the dry river. Our drone footage revealed numerous tracks crisscrossing the landscape. These are made by the large amount of wildlife that live in the area. Many of them want threatened species such as the yellow-footed rock wallaby that we were lucky enough to see on a few occasions. We continued on to the famous Akarula Wilderness Sanctuary. Akarula Village has a hotel, cabins and camping. It has a great information centre with a small shop, but best of all, it has a pool. After booking our camping spot, we drove straight to the Pinnacles. The area is a geologist's dream. Billions of years ago, the area was highly volatile. Continental plates collided and the seabed was folded to form the Flinders Ranges. Once thought to rival the Himalayas in size, billions of years of erosion have revealed the astonishing history of the Earth. Akarula was once a pastoral area that became infested with vermin. It was mined unsuccessfully for uranium and gems. Reg Sprig, a geologist, recognised the area needed to be protected. In 1967, he purchased the land and Akarula Wilderness Sanctuary was born. Before setting up camp, we went to the pool to cool down. Luckily, it wasn't busy as I had a slight wardrobe malfunction. We found a nice quiet spot in the bush camping area to set up for the night. We had booked the Acacia Ridge Walk, so early the next morning we were dropped off at the start of the walk by staff. We then walked around 6 kilometers along the ridge back to the village.
It was very hot but worth it as there are spectacular views of the surrounding area. got back we went to visit the old Bola Bolana copper smelter. Established in the late 1800s the harsh conditions saw it closed a few years later. We saw this as a great backdrop for photos and decided to do something completely different. I definitely wouldn't recommend walking in high heels around here but we had a lot of fun. We went back to our Karula to cool off in the pool and of course, do some photos. This petrified tree is one of the many wonders on display at the village. The next morning we drove to Nulduna Nul Duna waterhole. We took it slowly as there were a few low trees we needed to avoid. There were a few dry river crossings. This is an almost permanent water hole. It is quite saline though, with a layer of fresh water on top. It's really important not to disturb it, as animals rely on the fresher water. We did a lot of photos. I spent a lot of time taking my boots on and off. It was a fantastic place. We were lucky enough to see some yellow-footed rock wallabies. the village of the pool to cool down. The info centre has aircon, so it's a great place to visit. One of the main reasons we came to Arkarula was to test the capabilities of the Unimog on the Echo Camp backtrack. Described as challenging and remote, with so much to see along the route, it is an all-day drive. You have to pay to access the track and we were required to sign waivers and agree to pay costs if we needed to be recovered. The staff had said nothing as big as us had been down the track, but we were confident in the ability of the truck. We sent the drone up to see what the track ahead was like. This was the first time we had used the working gears. With the truck in four wheel drive, it just easily walked up the slopes.
We were told the road down to Barra Rana Gorge was very rough. We decided to do it. We could see how well the truck did in this environment. The roads were rough and narrow, but we just took it slow and the truck did it easily. Bararana Gorge is beautiful. These sandstone rocks are marked with ripples. We walked as far as we could along the gorge. The water hole was quite full, so we had to do a lot of climbing over rocks. It was a fantastic location for photos. It was lovely and shady in the gorge, so I spent my time there in a bikini. During one of our shoots, we realized we had a visitor watching our every move. He had the right idea sitting in the shade, but was wary and soon moved off. Like the other waterhole, you can't swim here. We started to lose the shade. The heat was pretty intense on the short walk back. At the truck, I found what shade I could while I waited for my photographer to open the truck. When we left the gorge, we sent up the drone to look ahead. All we could see was climb after climb. We stopped at the ruins of Lively's Gold Strike. It must have been dug by hand, which is astounding in this harsh dry area. This was the first time we had driven the truck on these types of tracks. I suffer from vertigo, so for me it was scary. Even though it was hot, when the going got rough, it was easier for me to walk ahead and take video footage. On our way back down, we saw this beautiful ochre wall. It was definitely worth stopping to explore. A little further on, we were lucky enough to see some more yellow-footed rock wallabies. Thanks for joining us on this trip. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and explore our channel for our other videos.